stress can have a big impact on your blood sugar and your insulin needs. But there are different types of stress. There is immediate, short-term stress, just that really stressful moment. There's long-term stress that is affecting you for weeks at a time. There's physical stress on your body. There's good stress, like going on a roller coaster ride or winning a soccer game. Most types of stress raise your blood sugar. But depending on the type of stress, there are different things you can do with your insulin doses to prevent that spike in your blood sugar or deal with it after you know it's happening. First, why does stress raise your blood sugar? Mostly it's about cortisol. One of the biggest ways cortisol affects your blood sugar is it actually tells your liver to release stored glucose. Why would it do that? That's so annoying. We don't need all that extra glucose. Well, actually, even in a non-diabetic, your body is releasing that stored glucose to give you the extra fuel you might need for that stressful moment. Unfortunately, your body doesn't realize, hey, I have type one diabetes. If you release all that extra glucose, I'm gonna have to take extra insulin to do something with that extra glucose. Otherwise your blood sugar will be through the roof. So your cortisol is doing what it's supposed to be doing, but your pancreas isn't producing the extra insulin that's supposed to go with all the extra cortisol. That's telling your body to release all the extra glucose. Kind of a mess. I mean, I'm getting stressed out just trying to explain it. Cortisol is essential. You cannot live without cortisol. People with Addison's disease produce little or zero cortisol. Cortisol has a really bad reputation. People love to put it in commercials and say, oh, our fancy pill reduces cortisol levels. But you do actually need some cortisol. You cannot live without cortisol. Cortisol basically protects your body during stress, during any type of stress. You need cortisol every single day, even just going up the stairs is a form of stress on your body. We don't think of it as a big deal, but your body needs cortisol just to go up a flight of stairs. But that's your normal production of cortisol. You have that normal level of cortisol you produce just to do everyday regular things. People with type one diabetes produce normal amounts of cortisol. When you experience a stressful moment, you produce larger amounts of cortisol and that's when you'll see it impact your blood sugar. Cortisol is known as one of those fight or flight hormones because it comes into play when you are in a moment of stress. We can't predict all stress. Sometimes the most we can do is identify it and react to it and make adjustments after the fact but some stress is long-term and drawn out over the course of weeks or months or years, unfortunately. So if cortisol tells your liver to release extra glucose and you have high cortisol levels on a regular basis from a kind of chronically stressful part of your life, yeah, that can be a real problem. Some of that extra glucose that cortisol is telling your liver to release will be used immediately for energy in those stressful moments. But if you are dealing with stress that is every day, all day, and it's going on for months or years, that means your body is producing more cortisol, which is telling your liver to release more glucose on a daily basis, which means you need more insulin. Excess glucose is stored as body fat. So the more cortisol you're producing, the more glucose that you're releasing, the more insulin you need, the more glucose is being stored as body fat, which can make managing your blood sugar and your weight much more challenging. Let's not forget about adrenaline. Adrenaline is the other hormone that plays a big role in stress, but it does the same thing that cortisol does. It tells your liver to release stored glucose. Everything that we know about cortisol really applies to adrenaline too. Most stress though is really more about cortisol then it probably is about adrenaline. It takes more to trigger that adrenaline response. We often think that adrenaline is kicking in during a CrossFit workout, but that's actually a whole different thing that's probably raising your blood sugar during intense weightlifting or intense anaerobic workouts. It's actually your body turning lactic acid into glucose, not adrenaline. It takes a lot to trigger adrenaline. You have to be truly in a fight or flight competitive moment or a dangerous moment. Adrenaline does not trigger just because you're having a lot of fun at the gym doing your workout. It's important to know that the first priority though 
is addressing your blood sugar. Let's talk about short-term cortisol and its impact on your blood sugar. This can be hard to predict. You don't want to assume that the roller coaster ride is going to spike your blood sugar. It might, but it might not too. I was on a roller coaster last month and I did not experience a spike even though I was screaming my head off with my daughter. I was expecting a spike and I was keeping an eye on my blood sugar afterwards to see if it was going to happen and it never did. So there are moments where you can expect that cortisol from that rush of adrenaline and that stressful moment, but you might be better off waiting to see if it happens than trying to predict it and taking insulin beforehand. If I had taken extra insulin before, during, or after that roller coaster ride, I would have gone low because I didn't experience a spike. I don't know why. I've had other times on roller coasters where I absolutely saw a blood sugar spike. What about that sudden argument with your boyfriend or your wife? An argument is stressful. It triggers that cortisol production. It gives your body that fight or flight feeling where it's like, oh, I gotta get out of here or I gotta face this. It might feel like anger, but that's stress, right? If you are angry, you are stressed. If you are really upset, if you are crying really hard, you are stressed. So that stress can take on different appearances in regular life, but all of the above can spike your blood sugar. Being really nervous before a big presentation, before a public speech, that can also spike your blood sugar. If it's something repetitive in your life, like a soccer game, and you know, all right, the last three soccer games, my blood sugar spiked 100 points, and you were left trying to deal with it after the fact. But now you know it's a pattern. You could work with your healthcare team to come up with a careful insulin dosing method that would prevent the spike during soccer games. Now you're always going to have some risk of going low because you're taking insulin. But if you know that your body is consistently experiencing stress during soccer games that spikes your blood sugar, you could take that cautious dose of rapid acting insulin to prevent the spike. If you do a lot of presentations at work or public speaking events, and you might really enjoy them, that doesn't mean it doesn't make you nervous or even excited and spike your blood sugar. So if you're seeing a pattern like, okay, my blood sugar rises, 70 points every time I do one of these presentations, you could work with your healthcare team to develop a bolusing method of rapid acting insulin to help compensate for that stressful moment. In my early 20s, I used to compete in powerlifting. At my first competition, I actually set like seven records. It was awesome. But my blood sugar was stuck in the 250s all day. Nothing I could do would bring it down. Powerlifting meets require a lot of waiting. It wasn't like I was actually doing a lot of exercise. You get three chances to go at three different lifts. So you spend a lot of time sitting, but my blood sugar was so high. As soon as the competition was over, my blood sugar finally came down to 120, but I had been taking Novolog all day trying to get it to budge and it wouldn't. I eventually figured out after attending several more powerlifting meets that the adrenaline from simply being there was keeping my blood sugar and my cortisol levels up here. Powerlifting meets take forever. So that short-term stress was affecting me for 10 hours. That's different than giving a presentation for one hour and then you know carrying on with the rest of your day. So instead of taking rapid acting insulin to tackle that stressful spike, I started trying to address it with my long acting insulin dose. The night before a powerlifting meet, I would increase my long acting insulin dose by about 20%. And that worked. That increase made it easier for me to stay under 160 throughout the competition. Keep in mind, this was back before CGMs existed. A CGM during all those competitions would have been really helpful. Okay. Let's talk about long-term stress. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Maybe you're looking for a new job. Maybe you have a job that is really stressful and you don't have the ability to just leave the job or change the stress at work. That long-term stress is going to have a long-term impact on your blood sugar levels. Here's an example. When I was going through my divorce, it was pretty cordial, but still very stressful for about six months 
while I figured out how to take our home and turn it into two homes. We gotta find a house, we gotta move the kids, we gotta get all of these things in line to make it all work. It's really stressful, it upheaves your whole life. Before that process of divorce, my long acting insulin dose was about 10 units a day. During the process of divorce, I had to increase my long acting insulin by five units. And I did that gradually, right? It wasn't five units overnight, but I noticed that my blood sugars kept trending a little higher and I needed just that little bit more help from long acting insulin to stay in my target range. If I didn't make those adjustments in my long acting basal background insulin dose, I would have been constantly chasing those higher blood sugar levels with rapid acting insulin. The funny thing is that we often associate insulin resistance and cortisol with weight gain. I was so busy during those six months trying to hustle here and get all of this set up and help him buy a house and help me buy a house. I actually lost five pounds, but my insulin needs went up because of the stress. So don't underestimate the impact of stress. I should have been more insulin sensitive because of how much weight I lost. Instead, I was more insulin resistant because of the power of those stress hormones. Once everybody was settled in their new homes, guess what? My stress level came down and so did my insulin needs. If you are in a long-term stressful situation, even if it's your day job and you plan on staying there for a long time, you don't wanna just wait for the stress to get better. Sit there suffering with blood sugars that are higher than your target range. Instead, talk to your healthcare team about adjusting your insulin doses to meet the demands of that stress on your body. If the stress doesn't affect you once you leave work, that might mean you need more insulin during your work day, but not so much for the other hours of the day. That can be a little tricky if you're not on an insulin pump where you can increase your basal background insulin doses for a set amount of hours. Stress can be from fun things too, but nobody wants to be stressed out. Dealing with stress as a person with type 1 diabetes takes some learning. One of the best things you could do for yourself is don't get stressed out over the impact it's having on your diabetes. Don't add to your stress by getting even more stressed out. Take a deep breath, identify what's going on. Okay, I just had X, Y, and Z type of stress hit my life, or I've been dealing with X, Y, and Z type of stress for the last six months. And then work with your healthcare team to adjust your insulin doses. We cannot control or eliminate or prevent all types of stress. And we can't anticipate all of it either. We don't always know it's coming. Sometimes the most you can do in managing type 1 diabetes and stress is simply react as quickly as possible. Then go for a walk Whew, and cool off. Thanks for watching Diabetes Nerd. Get more support in dealing with all that stress with my books available on Amazon.